Hello, my name is Gareth Davis. I work for Trenton Peak Archaeology in Nottingham. And in this short talk today, I'm going to present some of the recent work that we've done on the archaeology of Nottingham. Nottingham is a very fascinating urban centre. Uh, this painting from Jan Seabricks, I think, captures it very well. You've got the sandstone outcrop, St Mary's Church there, you can see in the background on the other part of the sandstone outcrop, the Ducal Palace, the castle, the Trent snaking in the floodplain, and beyond that you've got Lenton Priory. Now, for such a prominent centre, Nottingham is perhaps a bit underexplored archaeologically. Of course, there is a very fascinating uh, chronological development from the history, uh, historical framework. We've got the Vikings overwintering, it's a Danelaw borough. It's then recaptured by Edward the Elder um, and the Norse army reconquers. And then there's a final sort of Anglo-Saxon recapture in 942 AD. So you would expect maybe that there's something of a military character, certainly in the 10th century. But then later on, post-conquest, uh, it's a very important royal governmental hub. Uh, possibly due to its location as a gateway between the north and south. And uh, some of the wealth is sort of reflected in uh, the prominence of high medieval trade from Nottingham. For example, Nottingham Alabasters, very, very famous. You find them as far away as churches in Iceland, for example, but other trades as well. So given this kind of sort of impressive historical framework, why isn't Nottingham so explored um, and interpreted logically? One of the reasons for that, I think, is that some significant earlier work that was done between 1968 and 1980 remains unpublished. Um, the efforts of my colleagues uh, David Knight, Scott Lomax, Gordon Young from Nottingham City Council um, to get all of these unpublished archives on the Archaeology Data website um, is uh, fantastic, but the story really is, is locked within those archives still. Nevertheless, we've got some really intriguing um, impressions of, for example, a potential early settlement focus on the east uh, by the Beck um, Boots Garage evidence. Uh, we've got the Anglo-Scandinavian uh, Anglo Borough Defences. Uh, this is an impressive section cut through at Drury Hill, uh, the pre-conquest ditch. Um, and then within the interior as well, some indications of high status uh, occupation, pre-conquest ditch at Halifax Place, and then three phases of timber buildings. And also some intriguing Anglo-Scandinavian artefacts as well. So a lot of that has sort of remained locked within the archives um, until we saw an increase in development control um, and excavations as part of the planning system uh, from 2017 onwards. As you can see from some of the yellow dots on this map, a lot of the sites that have been explored are actually on the periphery of this historic core. Um, and they uh, sort of bring with them results of, of a certain character, particularly good findings from the River Lean floodplain, deep deposits there on this kind of southern gateway redevelopment. Um, but they start to allow us to look again at the development of Nottingham. So I'm just going to talk through some of our recent work. Broadmarsh, this is the Broadmarsh bus station site, uh, was the site of the Franciscan Friary. Um, this is the outer precinct wall that we re-identified, um, very, very well preserved. It was also identified originally by George Campion in the 1930s. We had some very intriguing deposits uh, abutting this wall as you move south um, into the lean floodplain. We had uh, medieval and post-medieval deposits, tanning waste, um, and other industrial waste as well. Um, and then even beneath that, quite deeply buried, we had um, alluvial deposits that dated to the Middle Stone Age, the Mesolithic period, around about 6,000 BC. And the more boreholes that we start to do in the River Lane um, floodplain, and we're starting to realise that this sequence is repeated um, across the floodplain. Moving a little bit further east at the base of the sandstone cliff, uh, we had um, an excavation at London Road that produced uh, later medieval uh, sort of tenement frontage buildings, um, possibly sort of wealthy 
uh, merchants' houses. Um, then just to the south into the sort of floodplain deposits as they started, we had uh, a dyeing or, or fulling works um, and other industrial remains. Um, again, deep deposits here uh, at the base of the sequence, we had a, a human skull, not in situ, but dating to the, uh, the 10 hundreds or 11 hundreds. So some intriguing evidence for that early medieval activity, although we don't know what the character is. Um, just adjacent to that site, we had a uh, slightly later 13th to 15th century uh, tanning industry, um, which was a really significant industry within later medieval Nottingham. Uh, these very nice clay lined pits were excavated, but also hundreds and hundreds of uh, sheep feet bones as well. Um, and what we're probably looking at is some sort of specialised industrial zone within uh, this part of the city at the base of the cliff, where you, maybe you do your sort of smelly things and the uh, the posh people are living on top of the cliff. Moving beyond then the um, limits of the, uh, the historic borough and east of this watercourse known as the Beck, uh, we did an excavation at Snenton Fruit Market. It has very important results. This was a site that was an intriguing target anyway because um, in the 1800s a couple of uh, 10th century Viking swords probably associated with burials, had been located. So there was a suggestion that there might be some early activity up here. What we found was some parallel ditches, um, at least sort of three phases of recutting in places. Um, and these were, they were largely sterile, and they ran parallel to the Beck watercourse, um, and intriguing, um, produced radiocarbon dates, um, uh, dating between the sort of the 600s and 1100s. Now, the biggest overlap really was within the 10th century, so the kind of nine, 900s or, or possibly just into the 10 hundreds. So, really, at this time of uh, you know sort of Viking influence and then the kind of the conquest and reconquest of the borough as well, um, this was corrobor corroborated by um, some very small fragments of, of pottery dating to the 10th or 12th century and um, uh, an Anglo-Saxon period glass bead as well. Another intriguing find from environmental samples was hammer scale as well. Some evidence of iron working going on, some, maybe some specialised production. We don't really know what that site represents, but it's intriguing in that it puts early medieval activity beyond the historic extent of the borough. And one sort of possible um, uh, sort of angle, um, e even though it's likely that the ditches are a bit later, um, is where was the Viking camp of Nottingham? Now it's quite often equated um, with the Anglo-Scandinavian borough, um, that's you know all that assumed where the Vikings sort of made their camp, but it doesn't have to be. You know the evidence coming up at Repton now is that the, uh, the enclosure um, uh, suggested around St Whiston's Church might only be in one focus within a larger Viking setup. And at Torxey, there's a huge um, sort of 70 odd hectares uh, Viking camp um, with all these sort of uh, Viking finds. So it might be that actually that early medieval sort of setup in Nottingham is not restricted just to those kind of enclosed um, areas uh, of the historic borough. And maybe we've got some stuff further. So the final site I want to talk to you about is excavations that we've been doing for the last two or three, three years at Nottingham Castle. It's been a very significant project. The castle is in its redeveloped form due to open next year. It's been set back a little bit by the kind of coronavirus outbreak, but we've done, as I said, a huge amount of excavation, including some set piece excavations. This is the service courtyard looking down from the middle bailey which is going to be the Robin and Rebels Gallery. Um, we had um, a late medieval courtyard here, um, um, and then uh, the post-medieval Ducal Palace courtyard as well, and, and, and drainage and, and service areas. Some really intriguing uh, medieval and post-medieval artefacts that were found as well. Now, in the outer bailey, uh, we dug a very, very deep excavation where there may have been structural remains didn't turn out to be structural remains, lots of sort of medieval rubble there. But behind that curtain wall, um, it is suggested that there's maybe some big, big deep collapse 
event and uh, the rampart was sort of moved a little bit. And it might be that that equates with this V-shaped notch in Deering's uh, plan of, of 1751. Maybe that was done in the Civil War, who knows. Very intriguing results from those excavations. Uh, that was the visitor centre site. Um, a couple of finds that then sort of tap into wider research themes from the castle concerning the extent of early medieval activity in Nottingham uh, is firstly from the service courtyard built into a later wall. We had this fantastic uh, 10th, 11th century anglo scandinavian grave cover. Um, we don't know where that originally came from. But then we also had in the visitor centre area um, cores that dated to the 10th um, and 11th century AD. So there's possibly some occupation horizons dating to the early medieval period. And then there's also um, this uh, object as well. So it starts to um, give an impression of early medieval activity. Um, and that then ties in with the wider sort of setup in Nottingham. And it sort of then brings us to a question of actually, we need some detailed uh, research gender and strategy for Nottingham. And that is the subject of um, an article that myself and colleagues have got published in the forthcoming Thoroton journal. Um, and we sort of survey some of this information that I've presented uh, today and uh, suggest that a wider sort of resource assessment, some deposit modelling, um, going through to a more detailed research agenda and strategy would be a very, very good approach for Nottingham. Um, and in that, um, we're very lucky that we've already got the East Midlands um, research, but we would sort of build on the approaches that have been taken uh, for other um, urban centres, uh, for example, York um, and, and Norwich. Um, and hopefully, uh, if the article is actually published uh, by the time that this talk uh, happens and goes up live, we can maybe link to it as well so that people can read uh, the summary of recent excavations, which I hope will, uh, you know, as demonstrated to you, the actual potential of the archaeology beneath um, people's feet in Nottingham, but also the potential uh, um, within the article as well um, is highlighted for looking at these kind of wider research themes about the evolution and development of Nottingham. Thank you very much.